All right, we do that. And I'll take this. This is a little high right here. I'll start with this. This one's a little high too. While that glue's hardening up, I'll take this and just level this out with the blade here. Just bring it to the flush to the top of the deck. And this one the same way. This one's got a little bit of overhang here. Watch your fingers and just carve it flush to the top of the deck like this. The same thing with this one. Get this flush to the top of the deck. And just cut off the excess. There we go. Now, if you really, really want it to be secure, if this is kind of a long-term thing, not just an experiment. Take a little bit of spray glue. Not too much, because this, this 77. This will actually Super 77 actually melt the foam, but it sticks to it. So just a little bit just to melt the foam through. And just shove tape like this. Just tape up your seams. This one's a pretty rugged one here. I'm not going to tape too well all the way. Maybe not good enough. Like this. Of course, you can spend a little more attention to detail and do a pretty, pretty job on this, but for this craft, this is totally sufficient. We just do this, this, this. And this one's popping up a little bit here, so I'll take it and push it in. Run the tape on there. Run the tape right down there like that. And here we go. Here's a, the tape might be a little tight. I warped the craft by pulling the tape too tight on this one, so I'm going to release the tension on it. I'll just get another piece of tape. I pull it so tight. Like this. Let's push this in. Let's pull that tight. Let's do that without making it too tight here. There we go. Not to warp the craft. Okay, and there's the pretty much the whole entire finished hull right there. That's how easy it is to build a hull. No big deal. Now we want to mount a motor in here, so I'm going to get a. I got a motor here somewhere. I've got a motor right here. I'm going to mount. Now the way I'm going to mount this motor. Uh, is let's see I grab some zip ties here. I'm gonna do this real simple way. Like, you can screw this motor in, you can put this motor on this block of wood any way you want, but I'm just gonna zip tie it on, simple as that. Let's grab that. Let's squeeze a zip tie over this thing like this most of the way. I'll slide one of the ears in that way. I'll take another zip tie. Start it off slide it in like this over the other ear and start pulling these tight put the motor wires where you want them coming out the right off the side between the zip ties just zip tie these down this way and when you're almost tight grab one more zip tie and go thread it through the other two zip ties so that it pulls them together and keeps them from spreading and letting the motor loose if you do this with three zip ties like this this motor will stay secure in here for a hovercraft. I don't know about other uses, but for lift fan and a hovercraft that really don't see too much drastic abuse, runs at a constant rate. You can just kind of do this. It really don't see impact, don't crash. Hopefully, I mean it's like that, like that, and like that, like that. And there's a motor now attached to there. Let's just uh, chop off these ends here. Oops. That, get that, get that, okay, no more ends. Now we just set this in the middle of our hole here, like this, and the fan is just above. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to press this wood down into here and make a little mark. I just make sure the fan can spin all the way like that. Make a little mark exactly where it should go. Score, score, score. Score the edges. Take your flat side of the blade here, this part, and just stick it in the score line and dig out about the wood's thickness right down, just like this. Just kind of just go back and forth a little bit and just plane it off roughly evenly down about the thickness of the wood. Like this, don't matter too much if you're real precise. Just get the edges. 
Make sure the wood can fit down in there and recess just a little bit. Get those out of there. Okay, that's going to go in this way. Is that the way we, we had it? This way. This is the way we had it, right there. And then, I can, I think I'm going to need another glue stick. We'll start this off and then we'll just, just load this up with glue here. And just drench this hole and fill this hole in with hot glue. And get this motor, so the wires don't get glued in. Just sh shove that down there and in there and give it a little twisties. Make sure it spins before it really gets hot. Make any little adjustments so now if you need to. Like that. Make sure it spins all the way. Yeah, looking good. I'll just let that dry in there. Now that's pretty much the base of the hovercraft. The only thing really left to do, aside from the aside from mounting a speed control and a receiver on here and Maybe a thrust motor if you're, you know, if you want to actually make this. But this is just a hole. I'm going to show you how to do. You can add a thrust motor. You can add the fan. I mean, you can add a thrust fan back here. You can add rudders back here. You can add differential thrust with two of them. Do whatever you want. This is the base to work with. But what you want to do next, the next step to making this thing functional as a hovercraft, is we're going to take the edges here. And I'm going to bevel these edges now just a little bit, very light bevel like this. I'm just going to take this and give it a, see what I'm doing here? I'm just yanking off a little bit and make a, and make a canting of a few degrees inwards here like this. This is where the, this is where the uh, tape is going to go. This is where the, uh, the tape for the, the vent is going to go for the curtain vent. Let's take these like this. You're not good at cutting 45s like this. You can do this with sandpaper, but uh, I'm choosing to do it like this just for speed and simplicity because I can just knock these out really quick. I mean, I'm doing a little less than a 45. I'm doing about a 30 degree here. Like that, like that, like that, and like that. All right, and there's the entire hull. Now for the skirt part, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a little trick here with some duct tape is you can take this duct tape here and we're going to make a skirt out of this stuff. We're going to make a gonna take this the width a little bit longer than the width that you want to do. I'm going to this in half there. Let's do this on the on the bench. Oops, I got a piece of foam stuck to it. Let's get that out of there as much as possible. Get that out of there. Okay, now take your duct tape. Fold it one third like this. Go a third, pull it down tight like this, push it all down. You should have a strip of duct tape like this with a sticky side and a non this is a sticky side right here and a non sticky. Can you see that? You can see that. Yeah, you can. Now, what we're going to do is I'll, I'll prep this surface before I do it because it just works better, but I'll spray a little dusting of the 77 on there. Now, take this and I'll go on that cut right on that line that I just made like this I'll just stretch this duct tape out fairly tight not too tight you want to pull the crap out of, out of shape and distort it stick that on there and just push the edges push the edges up like that now see that that's one edge so far you just got to make three more of those the same way I'll do that right now and I'll show you exactly do oops carried away knocking stuff over here but then I get a roll tape out somehow
and stick this last skirt. Try to just get it. Just try to stick them all on pretty evenly like this, the way they go. Like this, and then just work it on there. Like that. I got a little wrinkle, but so what? Okay, and there you can see are the far walls of the skirt. They're canted inward now. They stretch themselves out at about a 45 degree angle once you do that 30 degree angle. Next step I like to do is I just like to secure this a little better against leakage and against just dust getting in there, coming out, breaking that seal. So what I do is I'll go all the way around the craft now, just catch the edge of the catch the edge of the skirt you just did. One more thing I like to do when I do this is these inside pieces here, this is where it's going to try to pull up on you. So I'll take another piece like this, almost as long, and prep the surface a little bit. Tiny shot of that. And what I'll do is I'll take this inside here, I'll stick it inside the duct tape that's already on there, inside the inside the inner part of the skirt and just put it over there and fold it back down so that holds it in there nice and tight. Okay, one more piece here. We should be ready for a hover test. I'm gonna do. I'll put this back against itself again one more time. In there, down there, and over there, like that. Okay, now this thing should be pretty much ready to go here. Fan is a uh, fan is hitting a tape over here a little bit, is what it is. But I'll just cut the tape off. Then. A little excess. It's not hitting anything. All right, let's let's try to hover this thing now. Okay, let's put some meat back here, so that we're gonna need it. The weight's going to make a big difference, but that's the uh, that's how you build a hovercraft. It's really simple for uh, for this thing. You know, there's not much not much that's complicated about it here. Just uh, make sure you have a little bit of a you know a little bit of a skirt there, like that. That'll that's actually just about level with the thing, but that'll pick it up higher than the skirt will. So there it is.